it's not any one thing. I think the number one thing is, I guess, sound. That I love sound. And so if I can play with people who have a sensibility about sound and whose approach to their instruments or whose uh, music that they write or conceive is, is some way beautiful or fascinating or intense or any of those things, that's, that's a factor. Definitely changed starting with the Jaguar because the reason I, I, I bought the Jaguar uh, was to get closer to the, the whole Sonic Youth Tom Verlaine world, but I was trying to do something uh, with some of the sounds that I was hearing from these records I was so into. So, so the strings behind the bridge was the most important thing. I didn't realize when I picked up the, the Jaguar in this case that just the shape of it and everything would just be immediately lovable. I just fell in love with it. I just thought, oh my god, these guitars are amazing. Uh, so, so when I got to the Jazz Master, I realized this one that I bought from Watt, that it had the extra string length, so all of a sudden that extra string tension just felt even better. All that kind of little bit of mushiness that I was fighting, because I've always had heavy gauge strings in the low strings for mostly now I have kind of heavy to all the way around or 12s um, was something I was always into because I played pretty hard but when I cut the extra string length and then heard the extra beef from the pickups I was like man what have I been doing you know and I still love Jaguars I've got two over here but uh, yeah this was the beginning of a change and not so much uh, Maybe tone, because I think the guitar dictated its own tone in a transparent way. I could get any tone I wanted out of the guitar. I was using the Jaguar for a lot of jazz work, and uh, the neck pickup sounded really dark and beautiful. The tone knobs work. It's not a mystery how to get a jazz tone. You just have to hear it. So I, here I was able to get uh, a single coil snarl and that immediacy, but also I could get beautiful dark tone as well. But then with this kind of uh, feel, the string tension, and then the strings behind the bridge. And then the thing that changed the, the, my style the most was the trim, because pretty soon I started with the, with the Jaguar, and then further on with the Jazz I showed the wiggle thing, which I never used to do at all. It was, uh, for me, derived initially from hearing Tom Verlaine do stuff with his finger vibrato that reminded me of John Cipollino of Quicksilver Messenger Service, what he would do with, with, his, uh, with his SG with the tram, which was just that, you know, that, that kind of thing, which is a very un-jazz sound uh, and very un-rock in some ways. But everything, when I was a kid in the 60s, it was all about this, like, you know, like San Francisco guys, Yorma, you know, they were like, you can't even do it anymore. Really fast finger vibrato. Jeff has it, Jeff Tweed. Um, and then every, that was really, we trade, we couldn't do it. Everybody had Clapton, Nick Ronson, you know. Everything's all slow. It's not all slow. Um, and I think that the wiggle was something that, f that felt um, very vocal to me and it had a certain emotion that I, I just don't know why I do it but I, I've kept doing it all this time and it came from this. Which is the one I just got that used to belong to Roy Rogers. That he painted this color to match an outfit he wore. Mm -hmm. I think at the Seattle World's Fair. And it's a 62, early 62, so it's still slapboard. And um, both of them, as you saw with the Mastery Bridge, and this was set up, and you know, he had white paint here, there's little extra markings, cigarette burn. And this guitar just plays and sounds fantastic. So yeah, here, quick tour of Fender's world. You've seen this now. Come this way. This is, of course, with Rolko, I have too many guitars. So you saw Roy, right. as we like to call him. This I was showing Justin earlier. This is really strange. Wow. This is a 69 Jaguar without original paint that somebody put a mirror pickguard on. And then uh, I got this sick idea. It's an eBay guitar. Never again, by the way. 
I got this idea to stick a Charlie Christian type pickup here, and then uh, my man Woody, John Whitlin, asked Seymour Duncan, who I have a really beautiful relationship with, to uh, get a really hot bridge pickup, because he's a really loud. So, this thing's turned out to be a great, great guitar after much work. We call it the Silver Bastard, because it was such a pain. Someone he epoxied all the wiring inside. People did weird stuff in the 60s and early 70s, thinking that they were doing the right thing. <laughs> and this is the, uh, the $300 Jaguar. Not my first one. My first one's the 66. It's in LA. But somebody put hippie paint all over. And it didn't work when I got it, but now, of course, it works. And I put Kristen McManamy on it to cover up the hippie paint and also to make me feel happy every time I see her. And she's so fabulous. So that's, I, I use this on Hummingbird and for all that twangy country kind of stuff. And it's got a really nice, mushy tram, almost Bigsby ish. So it has its own kind of vibe. But a friend of mine named Woody Applenow, who's a great guitarist in Los Angeles, he's kind of the master of the whammy, and he was trying to wean himself off of it. And so he gave me his whammy pedal. He said, I'll just buy another one if I really feel like I need it. And I tried to give it back to him about five times. I said, I don't know if I can use this thing. When I realized what I could do with it, I, I bring it everywhere, especially for improvised music settings, because it, it does things that nothing else does. In, in, the, in the sense of uh, sometimes I set it out of tune randomly between the octave and I can change I can just, just, just play Oops. what those things could do because of that was when they started telling me some things you know what I mean yeah. so it's not so much experimentation after a while as exploration because I kind of know what everything does same with my foot my beloved fuzz factory you know just the way it works and the way the pitches that it sends out I use sometimes for infinite sustain or you know it's it's it'll be totally annoying if I do this while these guys are here but you know how it sends out Turn it. Turn your volume on. So if I So I use it for that, and always for some reason the Fuzz Factory and the vibrato pedal yeah. are so fun together, especially with an octave higher. Because it just sounds like some other instrument. Right? 